uh, welcome all of you. Thank you. All righty, we are um, gonna get some updates. I'm gonna turn uh, to Mr. Baysmore for right now on our updates for Blueprint and also for Build to Learn, if you don't mind. Yes, Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, Jeremy, am I on? Is it light? Oh, there it is. I think I'm on now. Uh, good evening, committee and uh, Madam Chair. Um, the Build to Learn Act has actually moved through the, the, um, through the House. The House has sent the uh, bill over to the Senate. The Senate is right now taking up Built to Learn Act as we speak, and there's some, uh, a few amendments I think that they're gonna um, um, look at on the Built to Learn Act that they wanna work through. Once, this, once the um, Senate finishes with their work, um, then that Built to Learn Act will, will come back to the full um, um, House and Senate, and then they'll vote on it. Um, so that's moving along. Um, I'm fairly well. We don't anticipate too many problems with that because on the Senate side and on the House side, including the governor, uh, um, they basically agree that this, you know, this piece of legislation has to move forward. And in addition to that, the president of the Senate, Bill Ferguson, and the, and the um, Speaker of the House, Adrian Jones, are in full support of Built to Learn. So I'll keep you posted on that. Hopefully the Senate can get their amendments in and, and get this to the full, to the full House. Um, the uh, Blueprint for Maryland's Future, uh, known as Kerwin. Um, the House passed their version of, of the Blueprint for Maryland's Future with amendments. There were some amendments that were attached to it. Um, it was about 30 uh, amendments. Um, this week, um, the Senate took up the same bill. Uh, they had about 30 or 35 amendments themselves on, on the same bill. So as we speak right now, um, in the Senate, they are taking up these amendments today. Um, our hope is tomorrow they would have worked through all of their amendments, and what will happen is they, the Senate and the House will take their versions with, with the amendments that they have, they'll bring them uh, into a conference. And so the, the legislature and the Senate will conference on the amendments, reconcile that, and then uh, present it to the full to the full House for a vote. So um, that's a large piece of legislation um, that's moving rather quickly, actually, because um, it's about 200 pages and, and, and real heavy lifting. But that is moving, too. Uh, so I'll keep you posted on that. I'll know more tomorrow, actually, um, what they're doing right now, because they're actually looking at those amendments in the Senate. And with the, with, with the um, Kerwin bill, they've, the, the bill is so large that they're using two standing committees on the Senate, um, Education, Health, and Environment, and Budget and Tax, two separate committees combined together to look at this one piece of legislation. And they did the same thing on the um, House side because, because the bill is so large, where they have two acting uh, um, um, committees working together. And that was been fascinating to see you know, that work out and two committees coming together and then working uh, in conjunction to pass that. So that, that's where we are with the, um, with the Kerwin and the uh, Built to Learn. Do you want to talk about any of the uh, MABE amendments or do you want me to say something? I actually <laughs> picked the packet up and must have sat it down and left the packet. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about you can any of those? You can All right. Mm -hmm. um, MABE um, uh, had, gosh, a good number of the amendments that actually um, were in, and a good number of them uh, did pass, but we had a whole section um, that did not, a lot of conversation about um, the pre-K, these are from my actual notes as we were meeting, um, the, the pre-K, uh, just a lot of discussion about salary um, because the reality was that a lot of the private uh, vendors or the private practitioners can make far more money because they have to be in, in alignment with um, what the public ones would be paid. And so the issue is, will they be able to find enough private ones to go along? Um, and they don't want 
to have different scales and won't have different um, scales. So the question very simply is, will they be paid equitably? Um, or will private, it, the, the question was, will private be paid at a lower level based on the public pay? And again, that's based on how much they would make if they were just doing this on their own. So there's a lot of thought with a lot of energy in making sure that they get top rate private ones who would be willing to work um, at those rates. But the bills, Tony spoke of 30 bills in one place and 30 in the other, but actually when they started uh, in terms of amendments, not, I'm sorry, amendments, they had a hundred, they had a couple hundred, over a couple hundred, didn't they, of amendments. So they've managed to wheedle them down. Some were very close, so it was easy to uh, merge that. So it is um, uh, moving forward. And as Tony said, um, that Built to Learn seems strong. And um, that that movement is going. But I also know that Blueprint for Maryland's Future, they are actually moving that fairly rapidly, I think, for it to be so, for it to be so, be large. so large. Yeah, they're, they're trying yeah. to get that through. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Comments? Okay. Let's go to um, the next item update on County Council um, title and resolutions. Tony? Yes, ma'am. Um, and I want to thank the uh, committee here for allowing me to go speak to the council. I th that was very wise, and and uh, I spoke with the with the chair, Kathy uh, Bevins, and she appreciated that. I told her we had a good, healthy debate, and who was on the committee, all of us, and uh, um, we wanted to give them their their respect and, 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 and deference, and come and speak to the chair about you know this particular um, issue that we are seeing on our side. The, um, the adequacy, um, the 115% rule, basically. Um, she actually knew a lot about it. Um, she said, Tony, we have been um, grappling with this as a council for a while because when, when, when developers develop, as council people, the public really look at us a lot of times and give us a lot of grief of how was this project allowed to go on when our school is already crowded. And so we know what the rule is and the 115 percent, and that's sort of, you know, so I don't want to go belabor that. But she said that um, um, they would like to uh, uh, meet with us. Um, yeah, I said, well, I have to come back and, 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 and check in with, the, with our committee here and uh, see, if, see if they want to do that. She said because she wants to work and the council work with us to try to find a you know, some type of resolution to this. She said it's going to be complicated. She doesn't really know the answer, but she, she thinks it's really time to look at this and we all kind of work together and, and figure it out with, with, with other stakeholders. So I was very encouraged uh, by the meeting with her and the fact that uh, she was really you know, willing to uh, start the conversation. Um, um, I, I told her we would hold off on the resolution and that we would work with, with, with her and the council right now and see if we can get, uh, you know, try to get some, um, you know, positive things on the book, on the books. Mm -hmm. Ms. Oh. Rowe. Oh, that's right. The chair so is, there. Is, is she suggesting like some kind of a joint work group or what structure would this take? I think the way I, the way I approached it with her, uh, I, I basically told her that I would come back and speak to the to our committee, and that I would I would love for our committee to meet with her, uh, kind of one on you know one on one since she is the chair, and then kind of get her ideas on how, on and her perspective on how we move forward. Um, she did mention that she would she think that other stakeholders would would probably need to be uh, in the conversation, but I don't know who that who that would be. But for the initial meeting, I think we can just sit down and talk, and we can let her know our perspective from the school side, you know, how we're getting, um, you, know, we, you know, this is a real issue uh, for the school board and us. So, so my thinking was the first meeting would be just kind of a, a, us getting together with her, trying to lay out, you know, maybe some next steps and figure out, you know, together how we can move forward. Okay, uh, let me just um, point out, mm -hmm. 
in terms of that conversation. Mm -hmm. While you were having that conversation with her on a District 2 matter, I was talking to Councilman Potoka, who also is working. So we don't want to be at cross purposes with them because evidently I don't know how much they've been talking to each other because his idea, uh, and I won't say what he told me because they need to have their conversation first, but where he, he really wants to um, uh, put in a motion and have discussion about that, and he has um, a more than reasonable uh, suggestion for what it should be. So maybe since she is the chair, when you get back to her, um, and I'll ask Izzy to make sure he talked. In fact, I did tell him that you were talking to her um, so that we can do that. And I agree that before anybody else comes in, it should be us because the policy says that we're supposed to meet with the council, which we've never done, to um, every few years to review this. So we need to do that first. Ms. Rowe. So the only thing I would say is that any meeting that we do, because it would be, um, we have to comply with Open Meetings Act. So if even two of our committee members are present, then it has to be an open meeting. So either we have one member of the committee meet with the councilwoman or we have to have an open meeting because we can't have a quorum of a committee or a quorum of the full board meeting to do work of the board without an open meeting. So we have to make sure we comply with that. And the council also has to follow those rules. So any meeting we have will be conducted um, appropriately. Okay, this is not a meeting. Um, I. This is an above board meeting, an open meeting done appropriately. So we will do we will do that. And since um, uh, the the policy or the ruling says that this is to happen, then this is a real meeting. It's one that is already on paper. I think it was on the paper that you supplied, or maybe it was the one Ms. Rosenberg um, supplied um, that talked about how this is to be done in terms of the two groups coming together um, every few years. I don't know why five sticks in my brain um, to make sure, but we will absolutely make sure that happens because it, it, it won't be just, in other words, it won't just be a telephone call, hey, let's get together. We will do it based on, so I'm asking you, Mr. Baysmore, um, when you, talk with the council chair if you um, just make sure that whatever the protocols are and all of that, that it is done in that way. That's why I said that I think um, I will talk to Izzy just to make sure he talks to her to make sure they are doing their due diligence and we'll be doing ours because this is um, a major um, thing that we are talking about, um, not just the conversation. No, it, it starts it, but since it hasn't been done, we do need, um, I concur, to do this appropriately. Okay. Yes, Ms. Rowe. So the only other thing I would say is that, and I'm really not sure at what point, because the, the work of this committee on this specific thing is really different than other things that we've worked on, but I think that... Um, if we're not going to do the resolution, I, and that's not recommended for the full board, at some point, if this committee makes a decision to move forward on a work group or something with the county council, I think that we have to take that recommendation to the full board and get the full board support on this board as a body moving forward with the county council. Um, along with that, even before, we have to take this to the full board just to play catch up. That um, would have happened, but it didn't happen. So we will take it. Um, well, no, it wasn't to happen. What we agreed last month was that we would take care of this with the council. We would discuss it at this meeting. And I've had that conversation with uh, Ms. Causey and with the superintendent. And after this meeting, we would then 
take it to the full board even before we've had a meeting with the council because they need to know what we're doing and have feedback in terms of uh, give feedback in terms of what we're doing so I will ask that this be placed on the agenda for the next meeting so we can bring it to the board and hopefully Mr. Baysmore if you just um, would, would follow up um, and maybe we have a little bit more clarity or focus on time process the whole night you know just how we we really want to grasp this so that we can present to the full board um, as much as we know or direct in terms of direction so we don't have to say well wait a minute we need to go back and we can share full information miss scott thank you that's what i was going to ask if there could be like any legs put around it as far as like the parameters as far as meeting location time if we can get some of that because i know that's what i would want to know sure and ask. So, sure thank you absolutely and the, does that sound good mm -hmm. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. and the, the meeting with the council, I'm going to uh, call the council chair tomorrow okay. and just check in with her, let her know we had our meeting and kind of what direction we're moving in. Um, Will you let her know that I spoke to Mr. Patoka just in case he forgot to mm -hmm. talk to her okay. uh, just to make sure, um, because I think it would be helpful because he actually has worked it out into we're having this mm -hmm. issue. Okay. Um, and so... Um, um, yeah, so he's very involved in it. So he actually has gone very meticulously through it and really does have an idea where we should go. He's done all the follow through just, you know, for himself. And he was going to present it to them, which is ironic that it, well, I guess it's not ironic since we're having that issue in two, but right. that we're discussing it at the same time. So it might be helpful to her and the rest of the board to know that someone on, the uh, rest of the council, that someone on the council had been thinking about it previously. And there may be other councilmen who've also, or people right. who... Well, right. man, who have also thought about it and have ideas. Okay. And we don't want to meet with, with her until after our board has been informed, correct? Right. We want okay. our board to know all of the details. And, and I would think she would not really want to meet with us. I mean, nobody has the kind of time to just sort of talk ethereally. You know, you right. just want to have something that's solid and real. And she probably would not something this major... I mean, this is major. I mean, this, this is going to impact. This will impact on how we do boundary studies. It'll impact on how we move people on building and renovation lists. This is probably will be in concert with them one of the most important things um, that the board will do or has clearly has done in years since it hadn't been done. Ms. Rowe. Um, yeah, and I think this is an act, actually an unprecedented public, visible cooperation between the board and the county council. I don't know that I've ever seen the board try to cooperate with the county council at all on a law that impacts school facilities other than just the usual budget passage stuff. So um, I guess what I'm unclear on is when we take this to the full board, are we taking it as an informational update or will we have some kind of uh, motion with recommendation or is it just informational update at this point? Um, good question. And it sort of depends on what Mr. Baysmore gives back to us. Um, because if we don't have form, shape and form is information and let them discuss. And then we actually can at that time make a decision. They can actually, actually um, one of you can make a motion, one of us can make a motion, um, how we want to move forward if we don't have anything concrete. If we have something concrete, then we definitely need a motion to say, Yes, we sanction this, move forward with this. We're very anxious to 
um, have it done. But I know, and I'm sure each of you do, um, having spoken to the um, chair and the others on the board, that people are very anxious. This is a nightmare that needs to be fixed. Yes, Ms. Rowe. So I think it's beneficial for the public if we do minimally an information session in the committee update on where we're at with this and what information Mr. Baysmore found out. But I think that because this bill and this type of legislation really is the county county's, the county council's wheelhouse, we should take our lead from them on how they want us involved. So until they figure out amongst the county council what format they want their work on their own bill to take and how they want us to be involved or how they want to get information from us. I don't, I want to be careful that whatever motions we may bring to the full board don't jump ahead of them on that if we're not going to do the resolution. Okay, that's what I just said. Okay, that if we don't have all of those pieces, it is purely informational. If we have all of those pieces in place, and again, you're right, we will take our lead from them, then we will go forward commensurate with that. But at the next board meeting, I will ask that at the next board meeting, it be placed on there. More than likely, um, just because of timing, it's going to be informational, okay? But yes, we understand it. This, it is, it is their wheelhouse. Thank you. Okay, we good? Excellent. Good, Miss Scott. Any other questions about this? Because this is in, important. So I think um, as we move forward, any other thoughts on the committee? And let's handle it like that, so that it it does not become corrupted or convoluted. The only reason we had conversations is because the committee asked us to do that, but we want to stay focused on the work of this. Um. All righty. Um, let's see. Let's talk about um, 2020 current education legislation. Now, um, the next piece says legislative process and program. No, Thank you, Ms. Scott. Um, know that um, Kathleen, Tony, Dr. Williams, Julia Hummer, Jeanette Ortiz. Ortiz, right, thank you. Ortiz and I have been in conversation about this, but that's the second half. But I'm going to go to 20, 2020 current education legislation because we certainly um, um, had state legislation today. So let's, let's talk about um, current legislation. No, you know what? Let me, let's not do that. Let me do this first, because what we will do is talk about current legislation um, in terms of what I'm about to present. Now, Kathleen w was last night, but she didn't say it, and I was prepared to do this, but she didn't say it last night, so I didn't bring it up, but she was going to do the intro on this, and then I was going to talk more about it. Um, so, can, do you have, what do you, uh, can I, I need your attention on this, because this is a full board process, and then we're going to go to the current thing. But I need you to pay attention to this copiously, because you're going to have to, we're going to have to decide about taking it back. Last night, it was just going to be information, but we're going to just go to, and then in my report last night, I was going to say, and then tomorrow, uh, the committee is going to talk about it, and we're going to make some decisions, and the board and then present it to them and go forward. But I can just say now, this is not um, going to be a, a big deal because it is something um, that, as I said, Kathleen brought to me. We did the research. We've talked to the superintendent. We understand how it happens. So if you look here, you'll notice in my right hand, I have the legislative book from MABE. And what Anne Arundel County did, and this is what Kathleen got from, um, from Julia, is their version. And Julie gave me the 2018 one. And we actually like it. 
what um, we decided is that during, and, and put in more whatever, because Jeanette has talked to you more about this, but when Kathleen Julia and I talked about it, it was something that we did during session. So what they do, which is really nice, and you'll see that some of this actually comes out of their handbook, their board handbook. But it is um, a really nice document that goes out about December. So this is a big job. So it really is a staff job. A, I'll say that again. It's a staff job, but we will help with putting it together. And then once it's together, it'll never be quite as large again. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. So um, the, this is the vision that we create this book, and I'll pass it around so you can just flip through it. In this book, you're going to see uh, different categories. Makita, I know this. I turned to this page, and I know this is of interest to you and you're on that committee. You're the member on that. And as the federal support of public education. So you see um, a page here. And on the page, it talks about what the county supports in terms of this federal policy. And then you see attendance and student discipline. You can see already how this is coming out of materials that we already have, some of which, a lot of which, um, what we all thought we would do is, um, depending on the page, what's on the page, we'd give it to the department in our system that is parallel to that because they probably already have the precepts. So what this is at the top of the precepts and then what the board um, believes, then they have a funding sheet. They'll have a curriculum sheet, labor relations. So you see, it just puts every little thing that we cover, that we do, and then it has what, it'll have what BCPS supports what BCPS opposes. Because when Kathleen was first telling it to me and she was getting it from Julie, I wasn't understanding how they could create this book before session started. And then when I got the book, I see it's not specific. It is precepts um, and, hmm, yes, your platform. Um, and, and, and so our precepts, won't necessarily change from year to year. So that serves as a guide for us so that as uh, the um, thing you were looking at, as all of these things come out, and then Tony can tell you how Anne Arundel County handles this because this is monumental, but as all of these things come out, we will see it makes it easier for us as a committee and a board because we'll see how they plop into our related categories. So I'm going to um, pass it around. Ms. Rowe, you had a question? I'll give it to you. I got it. No, I just think that's a good idea. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yes. It, it is. It really is an excellent idea. I think it gives um, um, form and purpose to what the committee does. It keeps us Focus so we're not all over the place uh, right. with bills that might uh, have something to do with whatever it is we're doing, or it might have something the bills that have something to do with another system, but something that we see as an aha moment or whatever for us. But it just sort of gives form, I think. I like it. Yes, ma'am. So this will enable us then to be able to quickly take positions as a board on more bills? Is that the idea? Yes. Okay. Um, see, and, and also, though, not for them to just be willy-nilly, that we see under what category they would fit so that staff, uh, school people, everyone, it's pretty clear that about our direction as a committee, as a board in terms of legislation. Yes. Yeah. So basically it's like an outline or rather a guide to like you said our precepts of where we stand on various issues. 
as it relates. So it gives people a guide of where BCPS stands on, and that would get updated annually or? Well, again, if, when, when you really get into it, you'll see as the precepts, um, yes, you will have one every year, but the precepts, again, might not change. So we would just be looking at these. For example, I'll just pick one. Let's say House Bill 522, Home and Hospital Teaching Program for Students. All right? So we might take that. And it might not be something that we're focused on every year. It might not even be a bill that comes up. But we would say, because of whatever the category is in there, we might have a home and hospital. What do we do? Whatever. Whatever we name it. And we'd say, this one fits us. This comes under da 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 da. And based on that, we know um, how we would stand. So when we're in conversations with other school boards or MAB or whatever, we already know, well, here's our position on this in general, if it has to do with health. Mm -hmm. So let's see now. Now we just say, oh, yeah, let's bring this back to the full board, committee and full board. If there's a motion, it would come out of committee, doesn't need a second, we just keep moving on. But if it's not, it's just matter of information, presentation, the board will listen to it. They might want to give a recommendation back to the committee or back to the rep for MABE about how we handle this. It rounds it all for us. Yeah. And then to develop this and these precepts, is this what would come out of this committee? Would we develop this, or how would that work? Uh, we all agree that this is a job. This is for people who make a real salary. No, no, I guess sort of like what those precepts are. No, that's what I'm saying. That's real. That, this is a deep dive, and it really does have to match as well um, with particularly the top part. If you look at the top part, it will give you um, information about Let's take curriculum. Let's take uh, instruction and curriculum, for example. They have precepts, all of them. That's a, Baltimore, that's a state of Maryland thing. Every school system for every area has its precepts for its category. And so uh, that's not hard for them to do, to pull that out. And then we will, as a committee, make recommendations, not the staff, we as the committee, will bounce around what we support, what we oppose, and then we share that with the full board. It does that, is that what you meant? It's yeah, a two-part thing. Sorry, I guess that is what I meant. I guess I, I was just trying to see how much involvement as a committee we would have with working with the staff on to, I guess, identifying which precepts we were going to pull out. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure how they came up with the different segmented areas. Is that working with staff or based on legislation previous or? That, the precepts for, um, for the staff comes out of them, you know, whatever, like in curriculum instruction, they have precepts that have been around and they have to shift them after a, a for a while, and then let's say facilities, you'll see facilities in there. You know, that con well, you weren't here, but the conversation we had, for example, last night about boundaries. So their precepts, the things that were their guiding forms in, in the past, need not necessarily all be our guidance for, uh, for the future, because we now see you can no longer look at a school without processing a whole community and all the schools. So they are changing. That's what Dr. and I'm pointing to the chair like she's yeah. sitting there. Um, Dr. Okay. Dr. Wheatley Phillips was sitting right there. Um, you know, she gets it and she said last night that they've been in conversation about the fact that they're going to have to change it. So that would be a precept that they would change. So when you ask, would we do this every year? If something happens, we have to change it. Yes, we would. But it really comes from the departments. But what the committee has to do, knowing what they do, because we're the what and they're the how, what it is they do, we would really be functioning first on our own, getting feedback from other board, meeting, uh, board members. And then maybe we would have to send questions to them. It's going to take a while. This won't come out till next year. We won't have this this year. Ms. Rowe? So is the way that you're envisioning the development of our version of this book to be something 
similar to how we do it in PRC where staff comes with a draft and then the committee looks at the draft and you know if we like it we go on from there or ask questions or is that how you envision this playing out in this committee? Yeah this is what we talked about um, and as I said um, all of those people I named at the beginning we've had conversations about this um, but certainly they would do the precepts because they might somebody's precepts might be way too long maybe they don't even have any yet I never seen facilities I only know curriculum instruction but um, we that would be the task um, that they would be given and yes then they present but we see everybody only gets a page so you and we will tell them that you get a page you get a half a page actually to come up with what it is you do and and maybe to give us some help about um, what kinds of things they really see as important then they bring it to the committee yes and then we will fashion if you look at the bottom on them and you see um, where it says on the page um, supports and opposes Okay, then that would be on us that we share with the board. Okay. That falls in line with what we do. Okay. The other part is what they do. So they do this part. Yes. And then, and then based on our questions and the answers of them, as a board or as a committee, we figure this out and then take it to the full board. Yeah. Got it. Because they may want to have some feedback as well. As what, yeah. Pow. <laughs> so we will have that book and we'll be able to give it out. So then next year, when as we get this, first line when we get them, mm -hmm. um, the chair of this committee and uh, the staff person, we'll know and whoever's on the committee will get all of this mm -hmm. and everybody we will be focusing now right. on putting it. Um, and oh, let me point out that um, Kathleen, then during session, will always put on the agenda a spot for this. Or mm -hmm. if we find that there's nothing that is hot, mm -hmm. then she won't. But always there'll be something on the agenda just in case. So we will then become an integral part of. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited because I don't think we've um, done this. So um, that gives us another open door with changing county policies and rulings and we're going to do this and this will happen hopefully long after we're gone. Ms. Rowe. So there's something that's not in here that we talked about in the meeting last night that somebody, was it the meeting last night or a different meeting? But somebody mentioned that one of the things Mr. Baysmore does is coordinate with um, delegates and senators about grant money that they're getting from the state for specific projects like track and field projects or different things in our school system. And if there was something in here just kind of about that. I don't know what about it, but just something about it so that they understand these things happen, they exist, it's possible that they can coordinate with the school system. Because it was news to me that that even happens. And so if I didn't realize it happens, probably other people, and then the book that we develop would be a good thing for our entire county delegations to have. Oh. So that they're aware of our they positions. Do get, we send the county delegation as well as the council members. We send all of our elected officials a copy of the book. Yeah, I think that would be great because then it gives them some kind of guidance for what, what, what our thought process is. Um, Mr. Baysmore uh, is what 
she's referring to connected, because I always add on that you're also responsible for constituent services. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. um, thank you. <laughs> and and I actually think that ought to have a page because even on this board, I don't think anybody knew that. I, I'm sure I said it for the first time and said somebody said something about that when we were doing the workshop, the, the budget, that we need a person who go, deals with the <coughs> constituents. And I said, well, Mr. Bazemore, I know this. He He's already getting all the emails and the this is and that's. So um, that needs to be said. Would uh, what Ms. Rowe is speaking of as long, would that fit under a page that co is called do. constituent services or would that be something different? It could be two different pages for you to have to do. Well, I, I do think it'll fit in our platform because every year in the state, in the state legislature, any delegate can put in uh, a grant or a bond bill requesting funding uh, for a variety of projects. Um, lately, we've been getting a lot of projects um, that are on school property. Mm -hmm. And so if it's on school property, you know, we have a say in that bond request and the, in, in the grant. So I think if we had a page explaining the process, explaining the process, and availability and, and who they need to contact, I think that would be um, um, I'm very informative because that's becoming more and more of a big part of what we do. Um, turf fields. Some of these um, grants and um, bonds go up to um, $600,000. And so they, they can build stadiums, they can build um, turf fields with these. Um, I think um, Officer Caprio, who lost her, her life, there's an elementary school on the east side of the county that's doing a playground project. And I think they came in for about $200,000 uh, through one of the delegates and the senators. So what we could do is have that information in there um, um, because, um, you know, that I, th I think that's... What do you call that? Because you need to have a page anyway, government and legislative services or liaison or whatever. So would that come on that page because now, if not, you're up to three pages, Mr. Baysmore. <laughs> we can figure it out. Okay. Yeah, we can figure that All out. All right. So but, I'm just going to yeah. put in my little note here mm -hmm. that it is constituent services, your government liaison, mm -hmm. and special projects mm -hmm. and grants. And you'll figure out how you how will just mesh all that. Mesh all that together. All right. Thank you. Uh, Go ahead. Who would get this? That was my other question. Who would, who would we give this out to or yeah. who would we make it available? Would we send it out, have it in schools? Mm -hmm. What would the, we do? The booklet, um, the booklet will go out to all elected officials, all of our elected officials, and then designated others, you know, like the um, president of the Senate, the Speaker of the House. All of those folks would have it because they'd be able, our people would certainly know that now I'm just speaking now we could change that I'm speaking to what Anne Arundel County does mm -hmm. they send it out to that to what I just said um, all of the board members of course get it um, uh, departments will have copies of it as well so that's what they do if we want to do something different we can talk about that Ms. Rowe so can we also put a copy of it on the website under the committees? I think we have a section on the website because that way it would enable elected officials, staffers, that's to have true. easy access to it. And that's the direction a lot of people are moving to is for, with printing, trying to reduce printing, uh, you know, having a link uh, on, on our page. And, and so I really am excited about this because this will really bring us together communication-wise. Uh, actually, Lily actually today was talking about local bills. Mm -hmm. And I told her tonight, we, you know, we were going to roll out some ideas and things we have moving forward so that next year mm -hmm. when we have any local bill, uh, what we can do is highlight those and make sure that all of our local bills we keep an eye on. And you guys, not you guys, the... the, <laughs> the uh, 23 years, the Mr. Baysmore, watch yourself. I know. <laughs> so that the board can be informed, the superintendent can be informed, and we can make informed decisions. Um, there are hundreds of bills, as you see in your packet. Um, we will get you periodically um, as the session move along. We'll keep adding on. It won't start off like this, but we'll get these to you in a, in a, um, 
you know, periodically. And, and, and what we'll do is, is we'll, we'll definitely look at the local bills, but any of the big bills that are in the session at that year, we will also highlight them. And in addition, if, if you have an individual bill that you're particularly interested in, you would let us know, we will highlight that and make sure we discuss it here. We won't have to go over every bill because the reason, and this is brilliant, and sure, um, Madam Chair, um, by us having a platform, what MABE does is a, there are, there's a lot of bills that fit into our platform. So you don't have to go through each and every bill uh, because it's already, you know, already fitting into our form. Um, what they, what they um, really focus on and what we can focus on on, on on some of the bills is that we don't want to be overly prescribed to as a board, meaning if there's legislation that limits your flexibility in making decisions, Maybe is really uh, uh, aggressive with making sure you don't um, tie the hands of the local boards because you you have to be able to have flexibility to make decisions. So Anne Arundel, um, and, um, Anne Arundel County said they just if they see anything like that, she says she don't have to take it to the board. They summarily we don't because you're not going to tie your own hands up to do your to do your to do your work. And so, the, so you don't have to um, freak out about, oh, there's going to be 300, 400 bills. We don't have to go through all of them um, because some of them will just line up with our, with our agenda, will line up with MABE. Uh, Ms. Pastor is there um, to talk about the bills. We'll be able to get good quality information coming back on, on, um, uh, uh, on what the whole state is doing. Um, so, so that'll help us inform us how to make decisions too. So this is good. Madam Chair, um, and again, we're setting this up for um, five years, ten years down. This will be in place so that, you know, um, this system, our, our Baltimore County Public Schools, will have this system in place. Jeanette. Both Jeanette and, and um, uh, Julia, Julie, Julie, Julia um, said that this precedes them, so they didn't create it. Right. Um, but it was there, and so that's what we will look at this document as being just something um, that will sort of support and guide boards mm -hmm. in the future. Okay. So we were all very open about it as we were talking and making changes. So you can go online, as you talked about it being online. Go online, um, because I only have the one book. Um, but I'll make copies. I didn't want to just go through making copies um, until we had talked about it first. But I can get you a hard copy or maybe I can get one from an another system. Um, but you can go online and look at it. And then you can see and process whether there's another area that you want. But again, when I looked at it, a number of things just jumped out to me at the for the beginning of the booklet, and that is that it just replicates some of the same things that we will have in our handbook, board handbook. And this will be posted once. And, and Eileen, we've presented this tonight, these bills. Will this be posted tomorrow? It has to go on board docs tomorrow. It w so it will be available okay. tomorrow. So every time we get one of these or we talk about, it'll be posted on board docs so that um, every, everyone can see it. Okay. Okay, so I went down, um, we have 10 minutes, I went down um, two legislative process and programs uh, just because I wanted that in your brain as we go back to 2020 current education um, legislation and that is open. So. Um, I'll start with Mr. Bazemore. I know uh, Ms. Grove, you were in Annapolis today. So you two want to talk about um, that legislation or any other current legislation that's going on that's mm -hmm. really, I yeah. think, important to you right now. Okay, Please Ms. Rowe, do so, Ms. Rowe, Mr. Bazemore. Ms. Rowe, did you want to take that one? Um, basically, the Senate heard testimony hearing on Senate Bill 1055, which impacts whether or not the uh, board um, vote for officers is by the number of people seated 
or whether it's based on the statute, which is the number of statutory seats. And the Senate heard the bill, and it was a 4-4 um, vote, so they need five to pass, so it didn't pass. And, of course, we know that that means it, it didn't move. So it because it's a local, and so we'll see that again, I'm sure, because it was a local, it needed to pass local to move yes. beyond that. So it, it was killed at that point. Um, are there any other current education-related legislation matters that anyone wants to discuss? Mr. Baysmore, Ms. Ms. Scott, Ms. Rowe, that's in your your head right now? The big one is Kerwin and Built to Learn Act. And, and this was pretty, you know, pretty significant bill today mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. the Senate heard, so. Mm -hmm. And I do think um, um, in terms of this, um, I'll just state my opinion or thoughts just for this committee, um, because I said to Ms. Causey, Oh, you have the other one. Last week, nobody ever asked me what I thought, but I'll just say that I think with this program, then when you see something, a bill that is local, like the one um, today, that rather than it becoming um, uh, a matter of any number of negatives that we will now be able starting with this committee and I and I have to say that I am disappointed that it was well we didn't have a committee to that point but I think we we must be at a point where we know how to discuss things it doesn't matter whether we agree which side we're on but we have to do that so that one it strengthens the body, and it also negates mm, misinformation, let me say. So I do I go back, tie that back to having this, then there should never be any reason why there's no discussion, that there's something that's as important as the one today that we never discussed it as a board um, is perplexing to me. Um, so hopefully this kind of program will eliminate that from happening and that the legislative committee can be leaders in spearheading that kind of discussion intelligently and um, professionally. And, and we can help our legislators. It's their business. They come up with what they want, but it gives them a sense of where we stand from day one. Um, so it's a, yes. Excuse me. Yes, so if that program had been in place, let's say from the previous year, how would that have impacted um, today's bill? How, how would that have worked? And it wouldn't have necessarily changed the vote, but certainly from a committee. Now, it's my understanding, because even though it, it may not be believed, I knew about it when, I mean, it was literally out there and hitting the world because I have, we all have a lot of things going on in the world, so that goes beyond the school board. But I would think then, if this were in place, any one of us that knows of a bill such as this that is going to impact on the board would contact, we would say, um, even if we had to have another meeting, we have to put a meeting out, whatever we need to do to say, this is important, and I think this is worth having a discussion about, and I'm glad you asked how this would fit, this is in my head, that we would have had a discussion about it because it's a local one that impacts our board. And if the booklet is about what we support and what we oppose, we would discuss it and then we should be the leaders to bring it to the full board and have a board discussion about it. For example,
Oh, that was the protocol. Uh, I don't know. It's it's an internal board protocol. I'm not sure if we're allowed to. What I didn't know where it went because you know I don't read a oh, lot of things, so I didn't know yeah. where it went. If it went outside the board, I could. No, it's it not. only it only I followed that sheet we got for the protocol. Okay, so it was internal. It was yeah, all it internal. Yeah, it was what the protocol okay. said. Okay, but let's just say hypothetically that um, um, then that that protocol would have guided us to be able to have a full board discussion. Then if there's a question about did the vote, did the board discuss it, mm -hmm. yes. We would even add, I would see, again, this is in my head now because we haven't fleshed all this out, that it would have fallen under one of the, the headings in that booklet. And so we would have had a sense of what do we think about this? Mm -hmm. You know, where does this go? But I think we would have had more of a discussion about it. We now would have had some order. So we, it would have come to the board um, not in any way other than a discussion about some of the points that people made that they w wanted to share. Is this an overreach? Is it not an overreach? Et cetera, et cetera. So that we could really be an integral part and then make a decision. Do we want to take a stand? And this was, this was a, a, a little bigger than maybe some of them would go in some ways. But then we could have a discussion. Um, I like discussions. So I just want to point out that I think that what was different about this particular local bill than the other local bills is that the other local bills have been in these packets, like the student board member voting and the different things like that, and we've had a chance to see them. This particular local bill only lived for two weeks. It dropped only two weeks ago. We didn't have any meetings scheduled in the time period. And it, like, they moved on this so fast, it really didn't give us a chance to do much with it. And I can appreciate that, but I want to go back to Ms. Scott's question, because that, again, is about having a protocol, a larger, an umbrella protocol, because it would not have been necessary. See, if you have a, if you have a committee meeting, um, out, this committee meeting is after the fact, and you're right, we hadn't had a committee, but we've had two board meetings during the time. So in, hmm? No, you, you oh, so we've had two meeting. board meetings. We had last night and the one before. So we had two meetings before today, which means that if we're processing our own internal, actual real protocol, before it could get out of our hands and we were going this way and that way, and it was it, it, this way and that way, I'm going to just leave it there, it could have come from the committee or a representative of the committee because that is a piece of our responsibility. If no one else brought it up for any one of us to say, here's a bill, it's got a short life, but it needs to come before the board. Now, anybody can do that. Anybody can bring it up. But again, it's the kind of thing because it now, we now have a focal point to say it would fall under this. Might be government relations. It might be Mr. Bazemore has never been to the table, okay? It might be that it'd be put on the agenda, Mr. Bazemore comes to the table and speaks to us in one session or another. I mean, it's out there, so it, would, it could be open. I want to apprise you of this, even though everybody might know about it. But I want to do that um, so that what we're doing is open and that it does not become um, acrimonious. So in light of all that, I wouldn't mind having some favors, favorable and opposing statements in our version of this book that speaks to changes to our parliamentary rules in general and what we as a board 
appreciate from our elected officials when they go about wanting to do these things as far as getting feedback from us or I don't know, whatever, yeah, just something that speaks to you. Because I see a lot of bills in Annapolis over the last few years of um, delegates and senators proposing things to change boards of education's parliamentary rules that the boards themselves end up objecting to, and like officially objecting to. So like Anne Arundel County this year is a perfect example where somebody put in a bill to make it so that 75% of their board has to vote to do anything. And so that's the, like six out of eight members. <laughs> so if you have to, have to get six out of eight members for any board action, you have to have almost unanimous. And that, that's unheard of. And so I feel like if we could come up with some general statements about changes to our parliamentary structure and what our positions are on different things, like the stuff about the student board member voting, the student board member could vote on everything for all I care. But I think it's weird that we're gonna say the student member should now vote on budgets, but still not bargaining units or this or this or that. Well, why? If we're gonna let the student member vote on one thing in addition to what they can't vote on, why not let them vote on everything? Like, it doesn't make sense to me that these things just happen out of nowhere. Like someone gets an idea, oh, the student members should vote on budgets. Well, okay, fine. So we vote every single time for them to stay in bargaining unit. Why not let them vote on that too? I, I, I just would caution though, I hear what you're saying, but I would caution that this is, and I'm again following Mabes, that we're not trying to get real deep in the weeds and start having what we, uh, support and what we oppose that starts touching other um, areas like state no, I or just... council. However, mm -hmm. um, um, I think it's important for all of us to know and maintain dialogue. The piece that I heard in that is um, that I would have liked, um, and in retrospect, I'm hoping that you would have liked personally that if someone, when it became an idea to do a bill that was going to impact us, that it would have gone, maybe that's what you mean by protocol, instead of boom, poof, mm -hmm. it's out there, that they would know Let's talk to the government liaison person yeah, who will anything. then bring it to the board and apprise everyone at the same time, this is what is happening. This is why we came up with this bill. This is what, I, I get that we don't get to talk about a whole lot of things that they do. And that's okay with me. But I do think that good communication saves, um, it, there's a scripture that says that poor communication makes for bad manners, okay? And the other one says poor communication makes for poor neighbors. And so that's true, that it would eliminate people thinking all manner of things about how it happened because they can hear it straight up. This is what we were thinking, this is it. I just consider that, um, complementary behavior. I think that's, I'm hoping that's what you're saying. Um, but I don't think, I, for my end, I wouldn't want to put in the book, you know, this is a, how, what we, but that is something that needs to be said. It needs to be articulated. I don't, and maybe there's another way we can process, maybe under government relations, how this happens. So if it's going to impact, like we see a lot of bills that speak to things that go to school nurses. I'll just use that as an example. Nobody ever asked the nurse about it. Right. No one ever asked, how do school nurses feel about this? How do, and yeah, that is big. So maybe, I think that's big. So maybe we could communicate a position of an expectation of collaboration on the part of our elected officials to when, when, I don't mean every single education related bill, but when they have bills that specifically affect the way this body governs, I feel like knowing how this body governs and getting feedback from us as a body is important. Um, 
I, I just see that as you get your feet more and more in the waters, that that's something that even without us trying to make one more rule, one more policy or whatever that, you know, Mr. Baysmore will do because he has wonderful relationships uh, from my observation. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.